Tom Waits is here. Later, we'll take a look at our giant late-night Christmas card, and Dr. Charles Levy, the dangerous animal expert, is going to be here. Congratulations uh, on the album, Tom. I uh, was reading, you have, what is that you're brushing off here? I don't know. I ran into a Christmas tree in the hall. <laughs> <laughs> They're everywhere this They're time of year, aren't they? They're out of Yeah. Uh, anyway, I was going to say congratulations on the album. You're getting, it's getting terrific uh, reviews, isn't it? Yeah, some people are uh, recognizing it, and uh, it's really uh, kind of an odyssey uh, journey. The songs interrelate. And I, there's 15 of them. I, I think you get more for your entertainment dollar. And, uh, <laughs> well, that's good. If you play some of the songs backwards, it says dirty things. Oh, that's but, uh, great. So, uh, so you really are, for the price of one album, getting all kinds of entertainment there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for some new consumers and attempting to cook my dinner on your stove, possibly. Well, sure, well, that's, that's what our stove is here for, Tom. Um, <laughs> speaking of stoves, are you still living in the motel on Santa Monica Boulevard in California? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. <laughs> uh, Didn't you spend some time there at the uh, Tropicana? I did spend some time at a, a um, well, I don't know, motel. I'd call it a palatial uh, state. Uh-huh. Um, uh, right on Santa Monica Boulevard there uh, on the other side of La Cienega. This is where Duke's Coffee Shop is? Yeah, that's right beneath yeah. the hotel. You had your piano in the kitchen. You've been reading my mail. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you're not there anymore, huh? No, no longer. Uh, travel has become an important part of my life. Yeah, yeah. You lived in a house trailer for a while? Just for a brief period. Now, what was that like as an experience for a man it's of the small. world like yourself? It's, uh, it's close, but you can always pick up and move the next day. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, you also, for a while, uh, years ago, lived in a car? Um, well, not for an extended period of time. <laughs> uh, you know how those accommodations can be. Yeah, yeah. What kind of car was it? It was a 62 wagon black interior. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did, uh, did you do much entertaining in those days? Uh, you, mean, uh, you mean nightclubs, that type of thing? No, no, I mean friends drop over, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I know where you're trying to take this. No, no, I, was just, I just think it's interesting. But also, and correct me if this is not the truth, you were born in a piece of modern transportation, weren't you? According to my Uncle Robert, but I, I don't know. People say a lot of things. But was it a cab you were supposedly born in? It was a uh, red and white with the, uh, you know, meter running. With the meter was running. And uh, uh, where was this? In Indiana. No, really? Yeah. What part of Indiana? Uh, uh, it's a place called Valparaiso. Oh, sure, I know where that is. Yeah. It's, uh, no, I do. I, I'm from Indiana yeah. myself, so I know well, that. Well, and then I spent a lot of time in California, North Dakota, Minnesota, Florida, yeah. Guam. Guam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right, now, for, uh, for a, a man who, was, who started life in the backseat of a red and white cab, uh, last year you were nominated for an Academy Award. This is a, a long trip. You actually yeah. you went to the, the award ceremony, didn't you? For the, it was for the music for uh, One from the Heart. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what was that like for you, being there? Well, um, you know, I, I went back and forth as, well, I mean, I'm going to go, I'm not going to go. I, I couldn't make up my mind. In terms of fashion, I, I don't know. I would have to classify it as a cotillion. You know, it's, uh, it's a lot of 1959 prom formals and that uh -huh. type of thing. Yeah. And uh, so... Uh, Did you have a tuxedo? As a matter of fact, I did, yeah. An old clothes horse like myself was uh, <laughs> uh, in the right place. Yeah. Did uh, what was the uh, what made you decide to show up for the uh, presentation? Well, you know, I mean, you really are are nominated by by people who are in your field, and uh, a lot of uh, composers and songwriters and musicians uh, uh, recognize the score from uh, the Coppola film. Yeah. And uh, so it really is a is flattering. Yeah, but so, you know, there was a time when people would think, well, it's, it's not really chic or hip. You're nominated, yeah. sure, but I'll be busy that night. I'll, you know. But you decided to show up and. Well, we were living like three, four blocks from the place. <laughs> <laughs> so I just drop in. What it's the heck? Really, it was very 
very simple. Uh, now, you, you mentioned earlier, Tom, about the, the concept of the album, uh, Swordfish Trombones. Go into that a little bit. This is a, a, a combination of sounds you just hear around you all the time, that uh, music ought to be more what you're accustomed to hearing on the streets and in your house and so on and so forth. Is that close? Am I getting warm there? <clears throat> well, let's see. Frank really is the central protagonist uh, uh, who really kind of came to me in a dream and he spoke to me of many things uh -huh. uh, <laughs> and uh, so it's really uh, I was trying to find uh, uh, musical instruments that were more nightmarish or uh, you know, dream like there's or, some unusual things on here as far yeah. as instruments go aren't they uh, break drums yeah that's the ones that uh, you can find just about in any automobile wrecking yeah. yeah. And you use for for percussion those things? Yeah, you hit them with uh, something that uh, you hit them with anything. You hit them with a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get uh, you get a lot of strange uh, mail, Tom? I don't get as much mail as I used to. Uh, every now and then I get a letter that uh, that uh, catches my attention. Do you have an example uh, from a recent batch that you could share with us? I got a letter from a little kid that was uh, was from uh, somewhere in the Midwest who uh, had been uh, suspended from school for bringing one of my records into a share class, share... Got a show-and-tell deal? Yeah, it was yeah. that type of thing. And uh, so I interrupted his curriculum temporarily. What was the, uh, what was the, the particular record and the song he, he was playing for the kids? I think, uh, uh, I think it was something, uh, some reference to uh, underwear in the song. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And so the teacher thought it was inappropriate. He's seven years old, so I wrote a letter and uh, did what I could. <laughs> Just you trying, to, <laughs> trying to get things, him off the hook. A lot of these things are out of my hands. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But it's nice that you made the effort. I mean, yeah. without that, he might have gone on to a life of crime. Someone's got to. You never that know. For him. Sure. 